Hello and welcome back to the port. I'm the Gavin Major and today we're looking at doing shipping forecasts for battleships. So as a battleship normally what you do when you enter a game is your look at what's on the other team, identify any divisions because therefore you know that's the kind of ships that are going to be working in a closely knitted group. You're going to be looking at what battleships are on the other team because usually they're your main counterparts but then you're also going to be looking at what cruisers there are, if there's any specialist cruisers and then you're also going to be definitely looking out for destroyers. Um, as we've always mentioned this game is a bit like rock, paper and scissors. You're the scissors, the cruisers are the paper and the destroyers are the rocks. So everything's designed to kill something in a specialist way, obviously everything can hurt everything though. Um, so what we want to do is know what's the counterparts in the enemy team and then what we really need to look out for um, just in case they take us down. Now we're going to be looking at three introductions to games, uh, a tier 3, a tier 5 and a tier 7 and when we're looking at those we're going to look at the shipping forecast for that tier and then what we'll do is then also discuss um, what ships to be looking out for, things to bear in mind when you're playing tier 3 and 4, tier 5 and 6 and tier 7. Um, now obviously this is all before the legendary ship update comes in um, but I think the legendary ships aren't going to be really here until probably about halfway through the next patch so um, I think that's something that we can cover off at another time. So uh, let's drop into the first game. So here we're looking at a tier 2 and 3 game. I'm in the German premium tier 3 battleship the Nauser, the reward for the Halloween campaign of 2019. Now when looking at the other team, first thing we're going to see is are there any divisions? In this case the answer is no. The reason why we're looking for divisions is because uh, like we covered previously, divisions normally spawn together. So say they are one destroyer and one cruiser or one strong one cruiser, one battleship, or if they've got a decent diversity to their squad, they drop them together. Uh, the only time they don't drop squads together is usually when it's uh, two, or definitely when it's three of all the same type of ships. It means if there's a division of three battleships, it usually will spread them out between uh, two or three spawn locations. Um, I think you can get, you can just about get away with that playing two cruisers or two battleships or two destroyers because it will place you as a pair with something else but when it's three of you all playing the same type of ship it will just move you apart um, so that's something to bear in mind when you play a division and also when you're playing against the division uh, now looking at the enemy team in this case we have three enemy destroyers a v25 an is lab and a v170 uh, so things to bear in mind is the, uh, the Germans, the V-25 and the V-170 at TS-2 and 3 have forward firing torpedoes. Um, so usually what you'll see them do is they like they keep turning around like they're doing like an S shape towards you. Because they do their side torpedoes and then they do their front right torpedo and then their front left torpedo. And then they swing around to the side and get their side out again. And then they keep like fish tailing towards you um, when you're a battleship. So that's something to bear in mind. Uh, the Ayaslav, um, she's not because she's Russian. Uh, she has small torpedo caliber, fast reloading, uh, but very short range. So you will see her before she can get near you. Um, down at these lower tiers, it's always worth bearing in mind which destroyers can stealth torpedo and which ones can't. So, for example, the Russians can't, the Americans can't, the British can, but only just. Um, the Japanese can, um, the Germans can as well, but usually because of the torpedo layout they end up doing this fish tail and attack towards you. Um, now with the destroyers there's not, there's not many of them are that gunny, um, not many guns on them so usually you don't really expect to see them sat in smoke and shooting you away. Uh, normally it's they set a smoke screen to run away or to conceal themselves when they torpedo you. Um, when it comes to looking at the cruisers, uh, so in this case we've got Bogatry and a Frank, so the Russian tier 2 and the French tier 2. <sighs> there's not really much to say, I mean a tier 2 cruiser, I don't think there's really much to talk about, um, so we'll probably just skip them really. It's when it gets to tier 3 they kind of get interesting because you can guarantee they will have torpedoes. Um, none of them will have this kind of like stealth torpedo or not many but usually the torpedoes will be a close um, close engagement thing that they do so that's something to bear in mind 
if we just if you see a cruiser deliberately go broadside and then change its mind um, like it fishes out and then it turns back in it's probably dumped torpedoes towards you so you'll probably want to make a course adjustment or speed adjustment in order to try and counter that usually just turning towards them should like uh, help with that um, the, but the other one to mention here is that they've got two Danae's, two very light um, cruisers. So when shooting the lighter cruisers down at this tier, their armor is so thin that your AP for the majority of the nations is going to be just over effective. Um, so I'd probably advise that if, you, if you're playing, in, well, pretty much everyone actually I'd say, because the British actually have really good HE pen down this tier. So if you're playing any battleship, when you're shooting a really thin cruiser like the Danae or the Dougie True or something like that, if they're broadside on, you probably want to be putting HE in because the uh, it won't overpen, like go through with the ship completely. It will actually go in and then detonate. Um, if they're nose on, ironically, you might want to go for AP because you've got the whole length of the ship for the AP shell to actually um, go in and then detonate. Um, so that's just something to bear in mind. Now when it comes to the battleships down at this tier, there's not really much really separating them. Um, I mean, they're all definitely different and interesting, but there's, like when you're looking at what is on the other team, there's not really going to be any that like, make you go, hmm. It's going to be things like, well, the British are probably going to keep chucking HE at you, the Germans probably want to be going for secondary builds, the French are going to be slow, the Japanese are going to be fast, the Americans are going to be slow, but everyone's going to hit hard, that's the thing. Um, just bear in mind that probably the British should be throwing HE and burning you rather than um, sustaining you. Um, but yeah, I think that sums up about what, if, what to look for when you're playing Tier 2 and Tier 3. So here's a tier 4, 5 and 6 game. Uh, the reason why it's a 4, 5, 6 game is because uh, some people decided to division up as a tier 4 and tier 5, um, possibly not realising that matchmaking is based off of the highest tier in a division. So that's something to always bear in mind. If you're going to division up, try to make sure you're all the same uh, tier uh, because if you do um, division up uh, with someone in the higher tier, then their matchmaking is going to be based off of their tier, which means that you could be um, well severely up tiered. Now, looking at the other team, um, as a Fabuki, so stealth torpedoes, if she's uh, fully upgraded, um, very good stealth torpedoes. Japanese torpedoes do hurt, and it's very hard to predict where they're going to be coming from. Um, so usually when there's a Japanese destroyer in a game, you're, if they get spotted, I'd highly recommend that you assist and do anything you can to try and get rid of them because they're obviously the biggest killer of battleships in this game uh, just because of their high damage torpedoes and they can kind of come out of nowhere because of their long range. Um, but pretty much any destroyer now, uh, tier 5, will be able to stealth torpedo apart from the Mahan and the uh, Genevi. Uh, looking at the cruisers, uh, so obviously the Konigsberg, she's tier 4, she's going to be quite weak. Uh, Obo, she's going to be a bit harder to put down. Um, she's got thicker armour, she's got better guns. She's also got Japanese torpedoes with decent range on them. Uh, Pensacola, uh, a good number of guns, something to bear in mind. She will be able to chuck H at you and even possibly if you get too close and give her the opportunity, she will stick AP into your broad, uh, in your broadside at your deck level and actually hurt you for a couple of thousand at a time. But she has a big sister now and she's going to be very easy to pick off if she doesn't play it right. Uh, the Shores and the York. Um, so the Shores is a light cruiser, uh, York's a heavy cruiser. York's going to be heavy in the water, but she should have reasonable armour to like angle against you. Uh, whereas the Shores is probably going to be playing the distance and slugging HE at us. And then we have a Bayern, which is tier 5 German brawling battleship. So her dispersion is going to be horrendous until she gets close. And then she's going to have lots of secondaries. And the Snop is the Snop's a bit of a bow tanker. Um, but what we find is that her broadside armour is dead weak. So if you can expose her sit uh, side and get a sit down on her, that would really punish her. But also, even though she's a battle tanker, at range you can still penetrate the deck level um, quite severely on the um, Sinop. 
So usually a snob likes to try and get in close where you can have plunging fire on the deck and you're more like having quite a quite a horizontal tra trajectory of your shells and it bounces off the bow and then there's a kg5 kg5 is a basically a flamethrower she's going to keep slugging he down range uh, but she has a short range due to her smaller gun caliber so i guess what we're really looking for um i know it's a tier 5 and 6 game but let's also just cover off tier 4 really and we'll, we'll come back to 6 at another time so at tier 4 you're looking again you've got lots of light cruisers uh, the emily batang is going to be quite fast so you're going to have to over lead if you're aiming at her, um, but most of them are all still like cruisers still. Um, and although there are some stealth torpedoing ships there, uh, the Germ Germans can now stealth torpedo. Uh, so no, it's only the Americans and the Russians who can't. And then based off of everyone else being able to, able to stealth torpedo, um, they you can still work around it usually because the destroyers are still pushing out and scouting and also um, you do seem to get quite a few cruisers down this tier which are able to assist um, going up to tier 5 you're starting to come across some of the heavy cruisers now by heavy cruisers that's not really a specification of armour that's just a specification to gun calibre um, so you've got the Oba and the Pensacola coming in with their 8 inch guns uh, but everyone else has still got only 6 inch guns uh, but normally everyone's pretty weak it's only really the obo that can have that capacity to bounce shells whereas like i think um like most of the others are pretty weak on, everyone's weak on the side um but uh, they can also you can kind of still get ap down the length of the ship if they're trying to bow tank you as well uh, and then when it comes to battleships i guess the only real special one is probably the tier 5 premium number two so she does have torpedoes so if you try and get into a brawling fight with her um, just be aware that she will chuck out a torpedo at you um but it seems to be the, the general trend here is going to be like the germans are going to be inaccurate and lots of secondaries uh the british <laughs> their ap is good but it won't citadel you um they have to aim for your deck level uh, so they might sometimes just sit in a HE and just keep throwing HE down range. Um, the French small caliber guns, however, very accurate. Uh, the Russians, I think up to tier 5, um, their accuracy at range is obviously bad, but then they can still throw enough shells down range. Um, and then up close they obviously are very accurate however they have very exposed citadels so if they are broadside you can really punish them uh, the japanese are fast but therefore their armor is a bit thinner so if they broadside you can get them uh, the americans are heavy and slow and got big guns normally what you want to do is probably make note of what like of the americans and try and work your way using your speed if you're faster to um, make or break that engagement um, bearing in mind that they do have hard hitting guns and uh, I think that's all the nations. Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong. But um, so that's this uh, just this game and tier four and tier five. So let's go look at tier six and tier seven. So here we are at a tier six and seven game. Uh, so finally now we're looking at tier six and seven. Uh, I'm playing the tier seven Vanguard. But looking at the other team, uh, so two destroyers, Bensons. Now Bensons can stealth torpedo once they have torpedo upgrade. So when it comes to the destroyers at tier 6 and tier 7 pretty much all of them can stealth torpedo once fully upgraded except the Minsk uh, from the tech tree so that's uh, something to bear in mind that pretty much destroyers are now becoming a bit more of a pain in the backside really is the best way to put it um, so if you see a destroyer you need to be able to switch to it as quickly as possible and get rid of it for your own sake uh, when it comes to the cruisers, we have a good mix of light and heavy cruisers now. Um, the heavy cruisers do have slightly heavier armor now, um, especially like when considering things like the York. Um, uh, so they can bounce if they angle. Um, however, if they're broadside, you can punish all of them. Um, I think that's what makes it quite hard for cruisers at this tier if, if, if people don't know what they're doing in the cruiser and don't read the map right then they will get punished very quickly because battleship accuracy and battleship gun velocity is very quick at this tier and it's very unforgiving um, especially if people know what they're doing in battleships 
Um, but a few things to mention, especially in this game, there's two premiums, there's the Atlanta and the Knetsov. Um, both of those are HE throwers. The Knetsov uh, would like to sit in a smoke screen and throw HE at you from 19.7 kilometers away or something like that. So that's something to bear in mind. Whereas the Atlanta, she's probably only going to be getting into about 14 kilometers range, but normally she hides behind a island or something and she just, um, well, she let the yellow rain start is the best way to put it. Um, but as you can see, so there's only two destroyers, but that's because from tier sixes and tier seven games, there's a limit on how many destroyers there are allowed in a game. So that's reduced down to two. Um, I'm not sure if they reverted that patch yet. And then also, um, not a lot of people like to play cruisers. Uh, so what you'll find is there won't be that many cruisers. And basically, uh, welcome to the land of battleships. Uh, so in land of battleships, uh, we have in this game we have a Gneisenhauer. Gneisenhauer poor accuracy at range, likes her secondaries, has torpedoes. So bear that in mind, she's gonna to wanna to try and get close to you. Colorado. So now we're starting to see some of the 16 inch gun battleships. At tier six, that's the Colorado, the Nagato, the Nelson. And then at tier seven, it's the Iowa, the Amagi. Um, uh, actually, I guess the Snop and the um, Vladivostok will also come with 16 inch guns. So basically the gun cover is starting to get higher. Um, so obviously how much they can, how hard they can hit and how much damage they can do is obviously going up. Uh, we have also some quite oddities out there like the Jean Bar and the Richard Lou, which like the bell tank. Then so does the Iowa, uh, probably the Sinop and the Vladivostok. Um, then on the other team, we also have two uh, people taking the Vanguard out. Now the Vanguard, um, she hasn't quite got the number of guns up front to really bow tank. Um, she's normally played a bit more like a large cruiser, kind of like kiting in, kiting out, and um, switching, switching those back guns out when they can take an opportunity out of you. Um, but bear in mind that now the Vanguard could be get well, is getting a single reload booster. How much that's going to really change the Vanguard, I don't know. Um, I have to be playing that through. Yeah, so what you're really looking here is like the cruisers, the ones that exist, they're starting to turn into rapid fire HE spammers. Uh, the exclusion to this at every tier is always going to be the British, apart from the Belfast, because the British can only really slug HE at you. Um, just bear in mind the British do have torpedoes, and that's usually their ace of their sleeve for getting rid of you. But everyone else is just going to be throwing HE, the Japanese are going to be throwing out long range torpedoes. The Americans don't have torpedoes past tier 4 so you can always approach their cruisers um, almost like with quite a bit of immunity sometimes. Um, then the French are fast so just make sure you lead them sufficiently. Uh, tier 7 all the cruisers do have repair party to try and like gain back a bit of their HP but if you citadel them they're not going to be getting any HP back really. Um, and then, yeah, I think that covers pretty much everything off. Really, you're just looking and going, what do I need to, what is out there? Destroyers, okay, I can get rid of those if I see them. Um, but bear in mind, if they can stealth torpedo, how hard they can hurt. Um, how many crazy Ivans would I have to pull every now and then? Uh, when it comes to cruisers, you're almost like licking your lips and uh, pick, deciding which ones you're going to pick off and blow up. And then when it comes to the battleships, you're almost like looking and like going, which one's going to give me a harder fight? Which ones am, are probably slightly better than the one I'm playing? Which ones am I going to be in a prolonged engagement? Is there a reason why I might particularly want to avoid one? He might say, I'm playing a Vanguard. If I see a Jean Bar or a Colorado, I know the Colorado's going to hit me hard. If I, expo if I expose my broadside, so I've got to bear that in mind. And then with the Jean Bar, I've got to remember, Okay, so she's got reload booster. Um, she's so I can't. If I decide to break off an engagement, she's probably going to sit down me as I make that turn away. So it's going to be very hard to time that turn. So I probably have to be looking at using cover. So when it comes to the Jean Bar, maybe breaking off that engagement sooner rather than later when there's the shells got more time in the air and that gives me more time to make the turn could be something to take into consideration. But I think that wraps up uh, tier six and seven. So when playing battleships, what you'll be really looking out for is destroyers, who can stealth torpedo, who can't stealth torpedo, which ones do I have to really bear in mind, especially the Japanese is the best way to put it. 
uh, when it comes to the cruisers, again, you're going to be looking who's got torpedoes, who don't, so the Americans don't, but then the Russians only have four kilometer torpedo range, the Japanese have decent torpedo range, the British have like average, so do the Germans and the French. Um, also, who's got very good HE? Um, so you'd probably be looking at, say, like the Russians, the Americans, the French seem to have quite good HE. Um, the Germans have like average HE, although like the Nuremberg can have like a really quick reload time. Um, then like the British only AP, so that's not going to hurt a lot unless I go broadside. Um, so they're going to have to be like perforating my superstructure. And then when it comes to the battleships, you obviously be looking out for any high caliber gun battleships or any battleships with specialist gameplays like torpedoes or bow tanking. Um, so that gives you an idea what you'll be looking out for. Now we'll just let this gameplay of the KG-5 roll out in the background, um, but if you like this kind of content feel free to subscribe. I'm the Gallup Major and back to the port.